Okay, in this video I want to show you the power of Mask by Polypaint. So, just pick a colour, draw on the surface. I've actually lowered the focal shift value just so we get a sharper edge. Go over to Masking. Grab one of these swatches. And pick the green colour. Just go up and turn the RGB off, you can see that it's successfully masked. Invert. Then using something like Inflate. This is the basic process how I make my scale patterns. And it's, it's served me well for quite a while now. But with the Mask by Poly Paint, with the option to, to lay down multiple colours, you can get some really clever effects. But leaving it masked, go over to Noise, let's pick one of the Tileable Alphas. Turn up the strength. You see it in the preview window until you hit OK. And there it is. So we can isolate certain parts so we can think ahead with our sculpting and pre-plan what we're going to do. Uh, now the next sequence is where I'm going to actually tackle painting on the actual T-Rex and it will be time-lapse because it's like three and a half hours and at the end of it it felt like three and a half hours of my life I'll never get back but I think it's worth it and it's a particular discipline and before I actually speed up the video I just want to show you the kind of speed I work at to paint these scales it really is this laborious I'm not going to put you through this speed but I learned very early on, the more time and effort you put in at this stage, the better the final result. Again, it's just the standard brush, but with the focal shift turned down slightly so you get a sharper, head, sharper edge. And off we go. You might be thinking there are easier ways of doing this. And there actually are. But again, what I've learned is if you put the time in and the effort, and you think like an artist rather than a technician, you can do something quite startling. If you see the scales are actually vaguely following the contours of the folds of skin. This allows you to think ahead as well and draw larger scales and plates. Try and think about the surface of the dinosaur. This snow would be pushing into trees and its snow would be buried in carcasses would need to be protected. And the bizarre thing is, this is kind of like the scale value size of the Jurassic Park T-Rex. Latest thinking is that the scales on a T-Rex were incredibly fine, almost to the point where you wouldn't notice there were scales until you were really too close. Right, this part of the video is 1,494% speeded up. There's that graphical glitch again, where the poly paint shut off in a perfect line. I've turned symmetry off here as well, just so on the key areas that you look at. As with every face, what makes a face interesting is the fact that it isn't perfectly symmetrical. Just vary your work now and again if you're on areas of the face where you know that your eye will be drawn to, make it interesting. look at reference as well. The best reference I've got for dinosaurs, I look at photographs of emus and ostrich feet. That shows you what a really well-worn, weathered, scaly creature could look like. And there we have that glitch again. I did want to submit a question to ZBrush support about that, and it's nothing serious, it just it's some, something that happens when you're working intently on a high poly model. But you see where I'm planning little edges and lines. I 
There's almost going to be a hard lip area around the mouth, as you'd expect to see. And the scales are bolder and bigger, where the skin is stretched over the bone of the skull. Here, I'm actually dragging in an alpha that I prepared in Photoshop. This just fills up larger areas, so you can actually go in and just fill in the gaps between. Here's a real point of interest over the eyes. I'm going for some big gnarly plates and scales. And I've worked in studios where people have almost laughed at me for doing this. Saying, oh, it could be done with alphas in substance painting. You get some kind of effect in substance painting, but that's just technique. This is the art side of working in ZBrush. Remember when I finished this process, my hand was absolutely aching. I wear out Wacom nibs as well. At least once a month I have to buy a set of five more. You know you're working hard when you have to replace your Wacom nibs as often as I do. Again, it's just double guessing where little points of interest will be. If I was to go in with this this area and just drag alphas over the surface or even use the tileable alphas, it would look really cool. This is the face. This has got to be the point of interest. We will be using the tileable alphas on this in specific areas and I'll explain why. But again, Try and produce something that will actually withstand scrutiny, real close-up scrutiny. And a trick for, trick for this one is just put your headphones on or your ear pods, whatever your generation has, and put some music on. I think I got through two David Bowie albums listening to this. And if you get tired, have a break. Again, turn symmetry off there, just so we have a little bit of point of interest. There's something about having symmetry and all the time, your, your eye recognises it and it just seems alien and artificial. And again, as I said, these bony protrusions on the skull, over the eyes, top of the head, Put some nice big bold plates there. And do, do the larger scales in patterns as well. Your eye will be drawn to that. It's easy to be lazy at this stage. I used to actually just hold down the masking button, control, and hand mask every scale. Then a couple of iterations of ZBrush ago, they brought in mask by polypaint. If you look what I did then, I went in with mask with polypaint and masked out the scales to protect them, so I could go in and draw with the alpha. Now some of the scales got muddied there, but what you can do is switch over onto the red wax material and press C and it will sample a negative paint value. You can go in and paint the red wax colour in between the blue scales. That's demonstrated a little bit further on. Here I am, I've sampled the basic red wax material or the lack of colour I'm going in and sharpening up and changing some of the forms. 
going in the crevices and almost erasing the blue that overlapped into the crevice and the cracks. Trust me, this will make sense in a moment or two. And the worst thing you can do is turn off symmetry and forget to put it back on. I didn't realise how many times that graphical glitch happens until I see something sp sped up like this. Okay. Some points of interest across the snout. It's just little fine tricks and details now. Let's have a look at it. So we're just testing how, how it masks at the moment. So we've masked the blue scales. Go over to your poly paint and pick another contrasting colour. I pick red for this eye area. Get a bold block of colour over there. Because we've masked the blue, the red won't interfere with that line, the edge of the blue. I'm going to pick another colour now and do this area on the side of the face, the maxilla. Go for bold colours, the nostril done there. And here I've rushed towards actually painting the inside of the mouth area. We want to protect this fleshy area for when we do the texturing as well. So we've got four distinct colours there. We've got the inside of the mouth, the side of the face and the, the ear area, the nostrils and the eyes, and the mid scales. I can count, that's five. Okay, in the next video I'll show you why we put all this work in. I'll show you masking by polypaint and what we do with it. Incredibly gaudy with the white material.